All right. Let's listen to this. Okay, very Disney. Gives me like uh, Pocahontas vibes. Not Pocahontas, sorry. Uh, Mulan. Mulan is what I was thinking about. Sounds so nice. Holy shit. Holy oh, the violin as well. Bro, flute, violin, piano is how you convince me. They're so cute. The little balls he's shooting. And look at that thing he's carrying around. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> I guess this is his backpack thing. This is jumping like the apprentice of Bard or something. Actually, I like the color scheme. It's a cool looking gem. I had the same hair when I was growing up, actually. And now I'm bald. Wow. before he became the Lich King. Yeah, the Meeps are very, like, very bardish, for sure. Oh, that's a very nice theme. I like it a lot. It's a cool champ. Holy shit. It's not a f anime girl with uh, huge personality. That was very nice. I like that. Very cool. Very cool. Super cool. I like that. I like that. I'm excited for this champion. Milio's biography has been released. Let's take a look. Let's read it. Milio's story began generations ago with his grandmother, Lupi, Lupe, and her twin sister, Lune, two elemental masters who wove the respective earth and fire axioms together to overcome the Vidalian's trials and join the Yuntal. But after Lune was caught plotting against the Yuntal, both sisters were convicted of her crime and punished as twins. 
Lupe was banished to the farthest reaches of Ixtal, and Lune all but vanished, taking with her the last of Lupe's trust. By the time Milio was born, his family had done all they could to, to make the best of their new lives. He knew only love and laughter, and to him, life in the village was paradise. What more could he ever need? When Milio was old enough, Lupe tried to teach her grandson the Axiomata. Where the rest of her family had failed her, Milio showed promise and took to the elements naturally, but struggled to grasp the rules and rigidity of the discipline. Disappointed, Lupe gave up hope, abandoning Milio's teachings. Milio, however, continued to learn on his own. Away from the guidance of his grandmother, he abandoned the restrictions she had tried to impose on, on him. Studying nature itself, he in, intuited his own set of rules and eventually mastered fire, the one axiom his grandmother wouldn't teach him. But something bothered Milio about fire. Did it have to be so destructive, especially when he saw the potential for it to do more? The answer revealed itself one night while Milio was chasing the glow of summer fireflies. That led him to one of the village's hunters who was injured and unable to move. Milio tried to keep her stable with his fire axiom, but it wasn't enough. Knowing the village healer was too far, he tried desperately to adapt the axiom into a force that could heal. As he placed his hands on the hunter's stomach to support her wound, he felt a flicker of warmth. It was so familiar and soothing, like he was touching her soul, her inner flame. Then Milio began to feel that same flame within himself. He could feel it within the trees, within the leaves, as if each part of the junk was coming to life like a cozy bonfire. Focusing all of his energy into that feeling, he used what nature had taught him to manifest that fire. What emerged was a creature, small and timid with wide, friendly eyes. Milio placed it on the hunter's wound and felt the creature, his inner flame, heal her from the inside out. That night, he discovered an entirely new axiom, which he affectionately named Soothing Fire. Milio ran home to show his family what he'd done. Before their eyes, he manifested another soothing flame that danced happily in the palm of his hand. His fue amigo. And his family celebrated. Grandmother Lupe, however, was unsettled by this achievement. Seeing Milio's mastery of the axiomata at such a young age, Lupe knew that her grandson had done what the rest of her family failed to do. With his abilities, he could finally end their exile and restore them to the rightful place among Ixtal's ruling caste. However, she was troubled by his fascination with fire and how his burgeoning skills went against the traditional teachings of the Axiomata. Despite this, Lupe threw everything into her last chance at redemption. Milio became her sole focus as she nurtured and shaped his abilities, preparing him to leave home, travel to Ixal Khan, and finally free her from the burden of her sister's failures. Milio felt his weight upon his shoulders, and the thought of leaving home on his own terrified him. But because Milio loved his family more than anything, he would find the courage if it meant ensuring their happiness. In preparation for the journey, he and his grandmother fashioned a special backpack that Milio called his Furnacita, inside of which he could keep his ever-burning Fuamigo. Then, with a heavy heart and a wide smile, Milio, at only 12 years old, left his village behind, outfitted with only his trusty Furnacita and some new clothes made by his family. He traveled the entirety of Ixtal, forging his way through the jungle, camping underneath the stars and making friends along the way, all while sending frequent letters home that detailed his exciting adventures. After a long journey, Milio finally made it to Ixal Khan, where he has since begun his training to challenge the Vidalian. The boy with the soothing flames has caught the eye of more than a few, including Lune currently imprisoned beneath the city and biding her time. Even Milio notices the whispering that accompanies him around the city, but his focus is on joining the Yuntal and making his family proud. That's so cool. Interesting. Very cool. I'm just thinking about all of these stories through the lens of... Uh, uh, basically the lens of... Uh, 
the Riot MMO. It would be so cool if like Elementalist would be some kind of a class and they have like some specific, you know, class quests where they have to actually, you know, challenge the Vidalion. Like that would be truly my dream. I really like it. I remember in World of Warcraft Classic where there was, for example, the Hunter quest where you had to kill four demons uh, to uh, get uh, Loktelar, like the best bow. Uh, like that just made the class so interesting or for example Quel Sarar for warriors uh, I really love those class quests that uh, that it is is a test of you know something and um, it becomes like a status symbol very memorable uh, weapons and and quests that uh, you know uh, everyone can recognize as a feat of strength I really like that super cool I liked it a lot